We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton alongside the man we call b Brian Logan. And we're about to bring in a guy named D-Nix, David Nixon. Guys that know a thing or two about what it means to play at BYU and what it means to play in a big-time game on the national stage. So, David, first and foremost, it's always wonderful to have you in studio. Thanks for being with us. Glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. Glad I, to be I, here. I, I, it's been a minute. Man, you know, I... <laughs> It feels good to be right? on camera and on set with 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 my man. It's been too long, man. It's like like last time we were on together, I think Moses part of the Red Sea, man. It's been it's, it's been, been a, a minute. year or two after that. It's, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's been hey, a minute. You call so this affectionately Band of Brothers or Bob? Bob this this yeah. is Bob personified, this, this, right? This is the Bob's right, right here. Although although we never although we never played together, doesn't matter. But we're part of that fraternity. Exactly. <laughs> okay, well, as part of the fraternity, Brian and I were just talking about how frustrating it was to watch BYU at Baylor on Saturday and just the lack of push at the lines. So, David, was the outcome of the Baylor game more about talent gap or was it more of missed assignments, uh, lack of skill? What do you think? So, I'll say this. I went back and watched the whole game last night, actually. And it is both. Unfortunately, I hate to say this because it pains me, but it was mostly talent gap, frankly. Mm-hmm. The, the way that Baylor's offensive line pushed around BYU's defensive line, frankly, the front seven, uh, that's a talent gap. And, and, and I'd say that because if it's missed assignments, it's every other play. Maybe it's a play every three downs. There's a missed assignment. A guy's down the right gap. Um, something's going on. But it was play in and play out. I mean, they averaged, uh, I think it was over, what, five yards, six yards a carry. Uh, and so, you know, you, you rewind that to the other games, and BYU's given up only, you know, three, four yards per carry. But this, yeah. was, this was six plus. And so, for me, watching the film, it, it pretty much solidified the idea that, that Baylor was just much better up front. And that's on both sides of the ball. I think it stands out more against Baylor's O-line versus BYU's D-line. Uh, but you look at the BYU's offense line, they struggled blocking Baylor's front seven all afternoon long. And so, um, unfortunately, the talent gap, fortunately, we know that there's some injuries and, and we're getting guys back. I hate blaming stuff on injuries. And Brian <laughs> right, knows this. Yeah, we talk about yeah. this all the time. Yeah. You hate blaming stuff on injuries because everyone deals with injuries, especially this far in the season, right? Yeah. If in the first few games you're dealing with injuries, then, yeah, you can maybe blame it on that. But we're so far in the season now that everyone's got to have depth. Uh, but BYU's got a couple of years, as we know, to get right into the Big 12. They better build some depth there because uh, that was ugly. And, and that was the, the, the thing when I watched the film. Because I, I, I didn't watch the game film. Um, just on TV, it was like three, four yards, you know, the offensive line for Baylor was was pushing the defensive line for BYU back. And I'm like, that, to me, looks like more talent than – you know, actual missed assignments and, and, and kind of gap integrity. Um, but I also thought to myself, well, there's got to be a lot of guys injured because when you look at the first couple of games or the, the, the big, uh, you know, Power 5 games that BYU won, Utah, um, Arizona State, Arizona, you didn't see that problem at all. So how much of a talent gap is it from, you know, the, the starters to the, 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 the twos? Yeah, I think I think there's a big talent gap. But I also think, frankly, it's a competition. I really do think Baylor's the best offensive line BYU face all season yes. long. And, and they expose BYU because of injuries as well. Um, but I'll say this, too, when you, when you go back and watch the film, we'll talk about this more on AFR today. Uh, but a lot of it also was the fact that uh, guys were trying to do, you know, too much. Mm. And, and, we, we, and defensively, we know this. So everyone has run fits, right? Yep. And the safety knows that, okay, the backer's going to be outside, so I've got to fit inside. All right, what happened this game was Baylor was just gashing BYU's defense to the point where guys started jumping out of gaps because mm-hmm. they felt like they needed to do more. And that's the exact opposite. Oftentimes when you're getting beat up, yeah. you're like, okay, well, my guys behind me aren't making plays. I've got to go make a play. And so next thing you start doing something outside your own job. And guess what? Now you got guys stacking in the wrong gaps together, uh, and you get exposed. And that happened, I, could count, I, count probably, I counted six or seven times, where, where backers were coming up, they they peek inside and they jump mm-hmm. outside. In the meantime, the safety thought he was going inside, so he yep. jumped outside, yep. and you got the C gap wide open. So, uh, it, you know, when you're struggling, you gotta, it's almost like you need to go opposite. You need to be more assignment sound yeah. uh, and just hunker down. But, um, you know, you saw Kalani's sound bite there. He, he's he's frustrated uh, with with how they played. He's never going to point to injuries. He, no, and you can't. That, that, you yeah. can't. You can't. Everyone's like I said. Everyone's dealing with it. So, I guarantee it's a point of emphasis this week. It's also a mindset. Uh, whenever you get beat that bad, you come into work on Monday, uh, yesterday, with a different mindset saying, hey, this is our week. We, we've got we've to kind of man back up. We, we were, our pride was taken a little, a little bit from us this last yeah. game, right? They shoved it right down our throats. 
Uh, so you take it personally, and hopefully these guys rebound this week against Washington State and come out the bar. I, I, I've been a couple. I've been a part of a couple games like this where I, I would actually take a lot of ownership in the loss sure. and so some really big plays that I gave up. And I was so thankful that when we came in on Monday, Coach Hill and Coach Minnow, I was like, we're not watching this film. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Please. Burn it. Thank you. Trash it. Please. Please. Burn it. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not sure if it was that bad of a game um, to do, but I almost felt like this was one of those ones where it's like, yo, we got whooped. It's okay. Um, let's reset. And like, like, like you said, Spencer, let's burn it and let's move on. Okay, so I, I don't know what happened from the looks of it. Kalani did not burn it. Yeah. <laughs> he watched it again and again and again, and he's really upset. And I get it. You know, I mean, you're the head ball coach. You started 5-0. and But this isn't just something that happened against Baylor. David, this happened against Boise State, a team that was ranked 105th in rushing coming into the game in Provo. And Boise State got a push consistently against BYU and were able to run the ball effectively. And what they do, they turn around, they lose to Air Force at home. You know, so that loss stings. Yeah, and, and, and I'll say this. In the last two you mentioned yesterday, uh, watching the film as well, it's pretty evident that BYU misses Keenan Peely yes. a, a lot. I was just going to say, okay, your best linebacker in the middle is gone. Let's, so let's just say if Keenan Peely is there and Tyler Batty is playing 100% and Atunai Samahe is 100% and not banged up and Lorenzo Falateo is playing, he didn't make the trip to Baylor. Let's say all those guys are good to go and they're at Baylor. What changes in that game? Does, how much of a difference would that have made? I think it makes a big difference. Does Bill, you win that game? I don't know. I think if Baylor would eventually just continue to grind on him. Uh, but I think it makes a huge difference only because Keen Peely is just an anchor on that defense. And we talk about guys being the wrong fits or trying to do too much. When you have that continuity defensively with guys healthy, starters that have been there all season, you know where each other are going. And, and I remember playing this. Kellen Fowler was my safety. And, and I remember we knew – that sometimes I wasn't going to be in my right gap. I was going to try and take a, take a gamble, right? And I was going to jump outside and try to make a tackle. Mm -hmm. But he knew, he, it was almost like a sixth sense. He knew that I was going to be going outside because we played together for so long that he knew, okay, I'm going to fit inside, right? And so you start to – I mean, that's what practice is for. That's yeah. why you spend spring ball and fall ball together because you learn each other's tendencies. And, and if you have a guy like Keen Peely and Fautea, these guys that have been mainstays, that have been there all season – then the players behind them, and everyone knows what, basically what they're going to do, right? They can anticipate what they're going to do. And right now, that's not the case. You've got Chaz Ayu that's all of a sudden switched to linebacker. Uh, it was pretty evident from the game, too. He's still not comfortable at that spot. Yeah. Um, and, and so it was just, man, it was a tough game to watch. Guy, guys were on skates. And we say, when we say on skates, it means you're just getting pushed out of your gaps. Uh, guys weren't being physical enough. They weren't button pressing. They weren't getting separation. And they were catching blocks. And, that, I mean, you add all those together, and then you have guys going outside and do, outside their own job in wrong gaps. It's a recipe for disaster. And, uh, I mean, I, frankly, you're almost surprised that they didn't rush for more, rush for 400, uh, because they, they completely controlled the line of scrimmage. With that being said, there were some plays. There were some bright spots in the game that BYU stopped them. I remember one play in particular, uh, Max Tully came up and did a fantastic job of holding the edge and had a tackle for loss on the sideline. And so there's some good things you can take away from it. But, uh, yeah, this film is one of those ones that whether you burn it or whether you watch it 100 times, <laughs> it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt, and you've got to learn from the mistakes because it's, it's a short memory, right? You turn yeah. around, and you've got another game in, in six days and, and on the road again, another afternoon game, which has not boded well for BYU in the last few Just weeks. don't wear Navy, according <laughs> to most fans. Don't wear the Navy helmets. Don't, don't wear the Navy helmets at this point. <laughs> burn, burn that instead of film. I, I would say burn it. And, you know, for the, for the guys, you got to look yourself in the, in, the, in the mirror, eye to eye, and say, look, you know what? God makes people better than others, and he gives others talents and certain other people other ta talents, and I got my butt whooped. It's okay. It's I look at myself in the eye and say, I'm, I man up, and, I'm, I, and I take this whooping, and I'm going to turn things around. And, um, and, 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 you know, what Spencer said as far as the last two weeks is kind of concerning to me because you, you see, you know, a little bit of a pattern. There's Obviously, there's problems in the trenches, both offensively and, and on the defensive side. Which, which one are you more concerned about? For me, it's the defensive line. I mean, offensively, you're, you're missing Harris LeChance, Joe Tukwa for this last game, and you've got two young cats starting in those spots, right? And so they got exposed. Um, I, I think that can be fixed via injury. It sounds like hopefully BYU has those guys back this week. Corey Aaron Roderick, he, he was hoping they, they, those yeah. line would be back, Tukwa and, uh, and uh, Harris LeChance. Uh, defensively is the one that, that worries me a little bit um, just because you know, I know you had Lorenzo Falatea out, 
Uh, but BYU had Batty, they had Mahe, they had Summers, I and mean, they had a lot of their guys there. I know they're banged up, but uh, they, they had some of their guys there. So, and, and, and I think the other thing that worries me is even the backers uh, struggled. I mean, getting off blocks yeah. and, and separating and winning their one-on-one. And that's the thing that is most discouraging is all the one-on-one -on -one battles were won by Baylor. Even when you go back to the secondary, the 50-50 balls yeah. up in the air, won by Baylor, right? Uh, and so... And that, that, that kind of shows the talent gap, right? At, at the end of the day, I mean, football, and we hear the guys say all the time, my 111, then if everybody's doing their job, you know, you should come out successful um, on the play. But... At the very end of the day, if you're in the trenches on the gap, one on one with a running back about to make a tackle or a jump ball, it's one on one, right? right? And and if you're not winning those, there's really not much you can do from a team perspective that could help you out. So for example, no. you know, obviously I'm I'm five six, right? So Bronco will call a lot of plays that would cover me. So I'd have somebody over the top, somebody you know um, in front of me, put me in a lot of cover two situations where I didn't have to. You know, be in a position where I'm going one on one you with get the Moss six five. Right, exactly. You, okay, you said it. Get, get in, get in Moss. Um, and 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 so if you um, you know you could have certain play calls and certain schemes to kind of protect your 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 your, your guys and your teammates. And I think with BYU in the past, we know that we're not the most talented group of individuals, and so schemes kind of make up for it. But I felt like this this there's certain games, <laughs> the schemes really can't, you know, make up for it. And so I guess my, my question is, is it concerning that it's a, it's, it's a talent gap or is it more of, uh, you know, these guys will, will get more experience and, and, you know, close that gap? Well, yeah. I think the ideology has changed a little bit too. I feel like on the outside, they feel like they can run with yeah. anybody. Right. They want to play a lot of man. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, I, listen, I, the sky's not falling. It, 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 I don't think this program is going to crap all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think we have great talent here. We just got exposed. BYU got exposed in this last game. And, and now, so when you face a scheme similar to Baylor, who's going to run the ball? And that's the other problem, yeah. is we had so much success to run the ball, we saw the backers were sucking up. And so the, the, the quick slants over the middle were wide open because the backers, you know, they were getting six, seven yards a pop on the, on the ground. So, um, you know, you stop the run, or at least you make it so they're only averaging two or three yards, and it changes the whole game plan. So I'm, I'm not worried about this team. I, I think they'll rebound. They've got, we've got good players. We've got enough players that we yeah. beat, you know, three Pac-12 opponents. Right. Um, the question is, can they rally around each other, and can they use this as motivation, or do they take it and they say, man, we, maybe we're not as good as we thought we were, right? I mean, how does BOU spin this? And that's up to coach, you know, head coach Kalai Sataki to, to rally the troops and say, guys, it looked bad. But we know we're capable. Yeah. Uh, and so let's go out there, put a better game plan together, and you guys go out there and actually <laughs> execute it right. uh, up to the, the standards you guys can. Well, and who knows what BYU is going to see in Pullman on the Palouse because they're missing their head coach and half their staff. But uh, that's what the rest of the week is to talk about, right? right. You know, right. Holy yeah. that's what we have the rest of the week for. David, great to have you on the set. We look forward to after further review. Yeah, always fun. Thanks, guys.